Good morning, my dear students and my dear faculty members. And uh, good morning, dear Father Rector. And uh, good morning, Sanjeevi sir. On behalf of Department of Management Studies, I would like to welcome all of you for this department association gathering. The topic we have chosen today is on role of logistics and supply chain in contemporary business. Today, the world depended on logistics. We need this supply chain in order to fasten our life in, and in order to make our life moving towards success. The logistics is a, one of the career field where we all can explore and get good job opportunity and also can start a small business as well. And we also have a very apt person who is having a lot of knowledge and expertise in this field. I welcome all of you. I request Anita to take over the session. Good morning, all. This is Anita from 2nd MS. I will be the host for today's session. I invite Honest for the Bible reading. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 13, verses 4 to 8. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly. Since they had no root, the withered away. Other seeds fell on among thorns, and the thorns grew up and chogged. The other seeds fell on good soil, and the broad forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Honest. It's my pleasure to extend a cheerful welcome to you all. Your presence makes us very happy. Now I request Mr. Brito, our secretary, to deliver the welcome address. Brito, you can start. Good morning, fathers, rectors, and our department heads and our faculty members. Having a good welcome speech is the best way to set the tone for an event, and it can be simplified or as formal as the situation dictates. Start your speech by greeting the audience before giving the overview of the event. By end of this session, we are going to learn about roles of logistics and supply chain supply chain management. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brito. Next, I invite Kanimori from Second MS to talk about the importance of logistics. Good morning to one and all present here and welcome to today's association. Today, I'm going to talk about logistics. Logistics plays an essential part in supply chain management. It is used to plan and coordinate the movement of product timely, safely, and effectively. Customers now not only include your neighbors and local friends, they include people from across the global as well. Effectively coordinate logistics leads to positive business results. As businesses grow and extend, they become more 
reliant on effectively organized supply chain which includes logistics the, this elements of supply chain is not something that only matters in large business development it it is just a curricul in term of improving efficiency and profitability with smaller and me medium sizes business as well logistics plays an essential part in supply chain management logistics helps businesses create value providing value of customers does not only refers to quality and quantity it also refers to availability as better logistics makes your products more available to an increasing group of people wise business leaders consider it it a very important tool in creating value of customers logistic creates and increases the value businesses offered by improving and ensuring the availability of product in order to provide more value businesses either work or improving their own logistic activities or really on professionals thank you have a nice day thank you kanimori now i invite our father rector to share a message with us respected speaker of the day dear members of the staff and my dear students i'm happy to meet you all on this day have a wonderful day today and we thank god for the wonderful gift of this day to us today's gospel i'll just reflect one point from there the four types of the fields which jesus explains where the seeds fell on first the path second the rock rocky ground and third within thistles and thorns and fourth the good one about this all of us know and we know that very often we are in this situation where our heart and mind sometimes it is when it does not give importance to what is spoken to us it's like the seeds falling on the path where it disappears very fast and second one a short term enthusiasm maybe beginning of the year the enthusiasm and afterwards it wanes away that's like the seeds falling on the rocky ground a third one the other concerns other desires and very often unwanted desires choke our growth choke our thinking and even sometimes very often our actions are also but i was always interested in the last part of it the good soil in the good soil also in the parable jesus says some produce 30% some produced 60% some 100% all were not equal all were not equal in another parable jesus would say the master gave 10 talents to one five talents to one and one according to their capacity so each one has got capacity and god decides and therefore it is god who gives and even god expects that but that percentage from you if god has given you only 30% he expects 30% from you and if he has given lot of talents maybe 100% and else we need not compare with the other persons mathavangalode nam oppida vendiya avashyame illai avargalude thiramaigal avarude achievements avare vetrigal idu patti nam yosana panna vendiya avashyame illa enadu vaalkikku kadavul enna koduthirukkendrar enakku enna kadavul thiramaigal koduthirukkendrar என்று பார்த்து எனது வாழ்க்கை நிகழ்வுகள் சுச்சுவேஷன்ஸ் என்ன இந்த சுச்சுவேஷன்ல நான் எப்படி பெஸ்டா கடவுளுக்கு நான் ஆஃபர் பண்ண முடியும் வாட் த பெஸ்ட் திங் ஐ கேன் டூ ஃபார் பீப்புள் அண்ட் டு மேக் த பெஸ்ட் யூஸ் ஆஃப் மை லைஃப் அந்த ஒரு திங்கிங் இருந்தாலே மனசுல ஒரு நிறைவு இருக்கும் ஆக மற்றவர்கள் என்ன செய்கின்றார்கள் என்பது அவசியம் இல்லை என்னால் என்ன நாட்டிற்கோ மற்றவர்களுக்கோ என்னை சூழ்ந்திருப்பவர்களுக்கோ கொடுக்க முடியும் என்ற ஒரு சிந்தனை 
it may be 30% from the world view it may be 60% from the world view or 100% from the world view but from your part of it unas sindhana illa it should be 100% always enal yenra alavukku and 100 sadayam naan kodukka vendum adha mathangalukku 30% a irukkala 60% a irukkala illa 100% a kuda irukkala to god i give myself fully in the vaalkaiyile naan sindhithu cheyalpaduvendra ovvor idhiliyum and the nanmai thanam 100% irukkanum if you live a life like that doing good always with 100% you offer for god everything then you will find the life is something fascinating wonderful and as the scripture would say what you are sowing now this young age is what you are going to reap afterwards book of ecclesiastes would say nee edai vidaikindraayo adai than arukka pogindraay aa thaniyaga irundha thinai vinayaga irundha vinai aa nee seigindra ovvoru seyalpadan sindhithu seyalpadu iravanukku ugandha seyalpadaga irukkindradha indha sindhithu seyalpadu your life will be wonderful god has given you a wonderful life it's up to you make it beautiful it's up to you to make life wonderful for you and for others have a wonderful day god bless thanks for the occasion you have given to me the chance thank you father now i invite janestri from first ms to introduce our chief guest good morning this is respected father rector good morning my dear faculty members good morning my dear friends it is my pleasure to welcome mr ms siranjeevi for this gathering mr siranjeevi was session assistant professor at mrc institute of management Mr. Siran G. V. Noor needs no introduction about his passion for teaching. He worked for FedEx and other multinational companies, which are known for logistics and supply chain management. Mr. Siran G. V. Bar gold medals from Ahmed University during his MBA graduation. He also awarded awarded as the best student from. Tamil Nadu Chamber of Commerce. He is a person who reads lots of books and always has information to share. His friendly nature among the youth and his dedication to empower the youth fits into the mission of Tom Bosco College, Elgiri. Dear sir, on behalf on behalf of the college, on behalf of the Department of Management Studies, I once again. Welcome to you for this wonderful day. Thank you all. Thank you, Janestri. Now I request our chief guest, Professor Siranjeevi Sir, to give the keynote of the session. Sir, please unmute, sir. No sir, you didn't unmute it. So turn on your mic, sir. Okay. Okay. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the lovely introduction and uh, uh, it's a fantastic story about uh, uh, what uh, father said. So thank you all for, for this day and uh, especially uh, the management of uh, Don Bosco. and i really uh, wish to uh, give thanks to mr valan peter for his support and it's a, as he said uh, it's a it's a contemporary topic it's a, it's a vital one uh, so we are going to see the role of logistics and supply chain in a brief it's a huge area we are going to see in a brief today am i my screen is uh, can you see my screen not yet sir hello one minute i'll do the sharing
Okay, the sharing option is not coming. Okay, sir. Shall I share for you, sir? Yes, that will be fine. Sir, it's coming, it's coming, sir. Okay, sir. Am I sharing or you are sharing? You are sharing, sir. You are sharing. I'm sharing. Okay. Yes, it's shared, but one minute. Okay, how to change it to the next slide? Okay, sir. sir I will do it, sir. I will do it. I will do it, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, that will be fine. Is my screen visible, sir? I'm seeing the general screen only. Yes. Sir, can you see the screen now? Yes. Okay. But uh, I can't. Yes. 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 That's fine. Okay. Uh, can you go to the? Yes. This slide is uh, perfect. Okay. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, today session. Uh, I'll. Uh, I like to start with a story. Um, can I get a nod? Say yes. And uh, if any doubt you have, you can always use the chat box, or you can uh, uh, unmute yourself and ask a question. Okay. So I just want to uh, make you understand about what is logistics and supply chain in detail uh, by using a small story. Uh, probably the story will help you to understand the concept a little. Okay, uh, so uh, what you see in the slide is a group of uh, kids. Okay, a group of kids are trying to go for hiking. Okay, you know what is the hiking, right? So uh, since you are from Elagiri, you, you guys uh, must know. So uh, let's say that these kids are going for an ex excursion to a nearby hill. So he was accommodated by a faculty or a teacher to help them to reach that particular place. So there are uh, 20 uh, number of kids out there and everybody got uh, their own packages. See, everybody wants something to enjoy there, right? Because they are going to stay there for the night and they are uh, do some uh, uh, fires and uh, hunting, a lot of things they are going to do. So they want to pack all the necessary things for that particular journey. Okay, they took that all the things and they started walking. You know the enthusiasm with the kids. So when the thing started, the discussion started, they, they kind of started running. Uh, the thing is, the, uh, the hike is uh, 20 kilometers long. They plan to reach there by evening 5. But they started around 9 o'clock in the morning. So instead of walking, they started running. And we all know that everybody is not same. In those 20 kids, some are slim, some are tall, some are uh, stout. Uh, some are uh, not that much uh, physically agile, some wear spectacles. Uh, so a lot of uh, different features of uh, features are there in the, the those kids. So all the students are uh, kind of started running because the enthusiasm got them. So they started running for a while, probably after an half an hour or one hour or something. Uh, they couldn't run as much as they can from the start. So what happens is few students or a few kids who are very strong are started running more. The left of the rest of the students has started uh, kind of uh, crawling. They couldn't uh, run because all their energy is spent. So the teacher, he's supposed to take care of everybody, uh, push the student to move further because the time was around 12 or 1. Okay. So by 4 or 5.30, uh, probably the sun will set and it will, uh, it will become so dark. It is difficult to go there. So they are moving a little fast. There is a particular kid. I show his image there. Uh, the little stout one in the left end corner. His name is Derby. He's actually little stout. It is a, actually is a healthy kid. That's not at all a problem. But he's little stout. So he was uh, he due to enthusiasm he started running fast. After a while he couldn't do that. So he was uh, kind of uh, pulling all the students behind because he can't walk at all. But the faculty couldn't let the particular student and move along with the other students. For him, all the 20 is important. So he has to make sure he must take care of all the students to the top of the hill. 
the objective is to meet the top of the hill taking everybody not uh, the first few or the first 20 10 or 11 for running a little fast the idea is to take everybody to the top so what he did is he kind of uh, a tie a rope with everybody because the first guy is a little frustrated by seeing derby because he's going very fast and he thinks that derby is slowing him down everybody seems as uh, think like the same so the faculty what he did is he tied the rope in the legs of all the kids so now derby is the one who's setting the pace because he's a slower one and he can walk one kilometer per hour everybody must walk Brown one kilometer per hour hello uh, Balan, can you hear me okay if uh, derby can walk two kilometers per hour everybody is forced to walk two kilometers per hour so that's how things are going to be work so after a while instead of five they reach around five thirty or six but everybody reaches the top safe and sound okay uh, can you go to the previous slide okay so uh, the thing uh, the takeaway we are getting from this uh, picture or the story is it's a company is like this scenario it's like hiking the faculty is like company okay so all the kids represent a particular department function or depart uh, different stakeholders see supply chain is something which is taking a product from its origin to the end so we are uh, targeting from origin to the end whatever things we can do from the origin and whatever things we can deliver to the uh, customers or the end destination it comes under the purview of supply chain okay so the derby is the one who's called as bottleneck you know what is bottle bottle is a different in shape it is uh, broad in the bottom and it is near the neck it is very small so whatever the amount of uh, liquid is inside whether it is a one liter or two liter or five liter or ten liter even uh, take the water can which is around uh, 20 liters or 25 liters it has to go through that particular neck so the flow is restricted by the bottle neck. okay it means that whatever capacity you have it has to go through some bottlenecks like that every organization it has to work as a synchronized unit it is not that one one department is working like finance is working or marketing or working it doesn't matter end of the day everybody must work in a singular way or a single thought then only they can reach the objective of the customer the objective is meeting the customer's need so uh, that's a introduction about a uh, supply chain i hope you understand this concept okay can we go to the next slide okay so uh, the only two things we are going to read that is this slide and the next slide the rest of things we are going to kind of uh, discuss only so supply chain is a coordination of all process like i said before all process involved in the flow of goods from the raw material to the end users the point here i'm trying to make is globalization um, since you you guys are from a business background or a bba you understand that by introduction of lpg in 1991 india opened its door to the uh, world businesses which means that either they can come and open their business here or they can have a joint venture here or they can uh, take the shares here uh, basically saying that people can come come here and uh, do the business so it changed it transcended the way indian business worked so suppose we have we are before that we, we are uh, trying to get things indigenously so whatever business i'm doing i'm going to get raw materials from india whether it is taking one day or 10 day or uh, one month I, I will wait once i get the raw material i will make a product out of it i try to sell within india so that's what the traditional way of uh, doing business was there before 90 but due to the introduction of lpg lpg is uh, we know that uh, a privatization globalization okay so it it made it made our indian industry to think radically think differently that means that we have an option of buying raw materials wherever it is cheap if i can get a, a particular kind of raw material from indonesia which is cheaper instead of buying that in a chennai or ambur or vaniyambadi or salem or tirchi i'm going to get that from indonesia it's much cheaper okay because there is a concept called economies of scale if you buy one singular product for 10 rupees and suppose you buy uh, 100 or 200 product with the same supplier or a same producer he'll 
automatically reduce the prices for you which means that you have to plan in such a way instead of buying small things you have to buy a lot of things like in a big order in that way you can uh, save a lot of money so that is the crux of supply chain so the globalization uh, made us think that we have to think from the origin when i say origin it is raw materials see it is a vital cost it is a very vital cost if i get something in india which is cost around 20 rupees or 30 rupees and i can get the same thing for 2 2 rupees or 4 rupees the customer doesn't know that uh, yes he know only the quality of the product he doesn't know that where i bought the raw material for the product so in a way each unit i can save a lot of rupees in that raw material itself so if i can do a lot of things in raw materials you have to think what is the possibility of doing other things like if i uh, outsource some uh, production or a, a packaging to another person i can save a lot of rupees like that supply chain uh, tries to address the problems from starting to end and the all the communication related to that is forwarded from one place to another place okay so uh, here uh, the point i try to make is core competency okay so global businesses or global globalization made us to think that we have to concentrate ourselves on only on the things we know see uh, we all know that uh, chennai is a uh, is kind of um, detroit of uh, india detroit is a place in us which is known for making automobiles okay chennai is a detroit of india so in chennai there are a lot of uh, automobile manufacturers are there uh, for instance uh, we'll take uh, hyundai mobile so hyundai automobiles hyundai is known for making uh, small segment cars and the medium segment cars and they have suvs also so they are trying to uh, capitalize on the market of uh, 3 lakhs to 8 lakhs that is a targeted area so what hyundai is doing is uh, they are uh, very much specialized in making engines but they are not specialized in making uh, tires they are not specialized in making glasses for the uh, car or the speaker sets or the any interiors so they try to uh, kind of outsource to somebody else who is doing best at that uh, particular thing suppose hyundai want to give that particular order of making tires for their uh, for their vehicles to michelin tires or apollo tires or jrf tires or any tire maybe okay so all they have to do is they have to sit with a particular supplier and they have to explain what kind of product they want and what duration they want this discussion is actually going to uh, cost us a lot of money in a profitable manner in the sense suppose you are uh, producing all the things in your warehouse i mean all the things in your production unit it means that you need to have a lot of raw materials stocked there in your plant which means that it take lot of time you have to spend a lot of money on uh, protecting those things you have to uh, employ a lot of person to do a count on those things a lot of things are there this is waste of time because your core competency is not doing the tires or not maintaining the tires your core competency is uh, making a car basically the engines so all the other things you can always outsource from others so what hyundai company is doing is they are trying to make only the engines the rest of the things they outsource to the supplier and the responsibility also transfer to the supplier so whenever hyundai company asked for a particular kind of product they have to deliver just in time whenever it is necessary suppose i am planning to make 100 cars for that i need 100 speakers my vendors or the suppliers will deliver the product exactly when i want it saves me lot of money because my process is completed as well as all the products are delivered on time which means that i don't have to invest money on uh, storages i don't have to employ a, per- a person to take care of that i don't need security all i have to do is i have to concentrate on the core competency which is making the engine okay there is a vital difference between supply chain logistics supply chain is a it, it's kind of a, a, a overall uh, a picture logistics it's a glue or which is a, a, a small part of supply chain okay it, it's like vision and mission supply chain is a big thing like vision logistics is mission logistics is the glue that combines each element of supply chain logistics actually uh, tries to uh, build the bridge between all the components of supply chain okay so there is a vital difference between uh, logistics and supply chain supply chain is a whole big thing it's a broad thing logistics is a small thing and the objective of supply chain is to uh, try a different way to do a business see i'm i'm doing a particular kind of business now 
I'm doing I'm doing it perfectly, and it is it's fetching me a lot of profit. That's one thing. But I have to I do a lot of introspect in that particular process and see whether it is feasible for uh, the years to come. So whatever things we used before, like 90s, uh, uh, the Walkman is craze. But nobody thought about uh, other things like MP3 player or MP4 player. But somebody did, and uh, the Walkman become obsolete. But at that particular point of time, people were believing that Walkman is the end of the world. Anyway, everybody is going to use only the Walkman. That's what the uh, principal thinking that time. But that's not true. So what I'm trying to say is, supply chain is uh, kind of uh, contemplating about, among yourself or thinking logically what will be the future course of action. That is supply chain management. So logistics is present day problem. You have to transfer a product from one place to another place. How to do that efficiently and effectively? That is logistics. Okay. Uh, can we not go to the next slide? Okay, so this is a schematic diagram of a supply chain. So the manufacturer is there here. He can get suppliers. I mean, he can get the raw materials from the suppliers. He can always choose the different suppliers because it gives him the leverage. If you keep on, uh, let's uh, take the examples of normal, uh, uh, from the normal life, it makes you understand uh, pretty uh, simple. So if you go to a particular uh, vendor or a particular uh, grocery sh shop every time, and you buy things for uh, 2000 or 3000 he'll give you respect for some time but after a while he uh, kind of uh, treat you very normally because he knows that at the end of the day you are going to come here and get all those uh, tomatoes onions all those things so instead if you try to uh, buy from different vendors because everybody wants to uh, sell their product right so all the vendors will give you more respect because they know that this time you are giving only 300 or 400 probably you may give uh, 2,000 or 3,000 because they know that previously you gave 2,000 worth of merchandise to somebody else. So they try to pitch for those 2,000. So they'll give you a lot of respect and they'll give you a lot of discounts. So that is the same with the uh, suppliers. So the manufacturer can buy a product with various suppliers. Price is not only the only factor which limits manufacturer to buy from supplier. There are a lot of other things also. Like I said, like a just-in-time concept, he can always ask for a just-in-time concept or he can always say to the supplier, you maintain the stock whenever I want, you can always deliver. Like that he can say, or he can uh, add some other classes too, because their sub suppliers are uh, intended to do that, because end of the day, everybody has to sell, right? So this is the whole gamut of uh, uh, supply chain. So manufacturer gets a product from supplier, he do the manufacturing and he sends to either uh, uh, distribution center or warehouse, and it is delivered to the customers. The point here, the only point here is customer. So whatever uh, process, uh, whatever uh, uh, perfection you have in a process doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it has to meet the customer. Okay. If a customer is going to a particular shop and he's asking for a particular model, which is not available there, which means that he's uh, switch his intention to buy the product, he will get another product. The reason is uh, we don't have any uh, uh, differentiation, much differentiation in the product now. If you buy a pen for 10 rupees, you will get uh, some five or six kind of pen for the same price. So the 10 rupees pen, every, everything is same. But if you want a Parker pen for 100 or 120, that is different. But the, generically speaking, almost all the products are same. So you can't lose a market, right? So you, you must be in a position to deliver a particular product to the customer whenever he wants, which means that you must have a warehouse and distribution center, which is close to the customer whenever a product uh, I mean, uh, whenever a customer comes to the outlet and asks for a product, you must be in a position to deliver him as soon as possible, which is uh, enabled by technology. So whenever a customer is coming, is buying, uh, another customer also coming and buying, like POS, point of sale. When you go to the uh, supermarkets, you swipe your card and buy uh, to Anil Semya or anything for that matter. So. In a day, some 100 or 200 people are buying Anil Semia, which means that Anil Semia is selling more. So it is an indication there is a, uh, there is a market for that particular kind of Semia. So what the Anil company will do is they try to uh, bring the lot of materials or they try to have a kind of warehouses near to that particular supermarket or whenever it is necessary, they'll deliver that. They'll replace that. that they'll replenish that. So this is supply chain. When we see the business as a whole, the process of supply chain happens before it was not there before it was kind of a uh, uh, hard and fast rule or uh, what is it trial and error methods supply chain seeking the business as a whole okay can you go to the next slide 
okay so we know that law 6 is like a mission statement it's trying to uh, fulfill the components of supply chain how the transportation must happen effectively and efficiently from point of origin to point of destination so don't confuse yourself with law 6 and supply chain supply chain is a futuristic thing law 6 is a present day thing okay next Like I said before, supply chain is a is a is not only the flow of materials; it's it's a flow of information. So supplier is telling some information to the manufacturer. And by the way, uh, there is a, a interaction between manufacturer and supplier. The manufacturer inquires with the suppliers what kind of product he wants. The supplier telling that yes, we have this product. So there is a communication is going among the supplier and the manufacturer. Like that, there are communication going among all the parties because. Everybody is called as stakeholders. You have to understand. We have hundreds. We may have hundred or two hundred share uh, shareholders. That's uh, stakeholders. That's altogether a different story. But at the end of the day, we want to satisfy the customer. The customer is the god. Why I say that? Because without customer, the company can't exist. To meet the customer, there is a proper communication. There is there is a proper uh, interaction between all the stakeholders. When we uh, when we can't uh, understand the expectation of customer. There is no point in uh, staying in the market. Uh, the same example which I gave, there is a one point. Some customer might thought that Walkman is uh, not uh, what to say, not efficient because we has to uh, use a, a kind of a battery which is uh, depleting as soon as possible. So they need a different kind of product. But the company doesn't accept the fact that customers are not interested. Though they keep on pushing the product to the customers. It's it's go for only a while. After a while, customers always change. Their uh, their interest. So we have to predict the market. We have to uh, give survey to the customer, asking what is uh, the thing which they feel about the particular brand or company. We have to always check the customer's perception. When we really understand the customer's perception, we can make some product which will satisfy uh, their needs. You you have to understand uh, when we talk about uh, mobile phones, a simple two thousand, a thousand, or three thousand phone is enough. For anybody to talk and communicate, but some uh, uh, phones are uh, priced uh, exorbitantly, like Apple phones, which is seventy thousand, eighty thousand, one lakh. So why people are buying them? Because it satisfies their needs. It is satisfy their their requirement. Any podcast you want, it is there in Apple. You can share the details. All the things are there. So when, uh, whenever you can, uh, what is it? Whenever you can. Uh, Fulfill the interest of a particular customer. Cost doesn't matter. You you always must think about the customer. Okay, next one. Can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, supply chain. Before yes. So uh, as we said before, supply chain is a kind of thing. It considers all the components or all the stakeholders as a singular thing or a singular process. When we see the uh, whole gamut as a, a single process, we can uh, always uh, get a better result out of it, like lower inventories, because we don't have to stock anything. Because we found that some supplier is ready to uh, stock our product on his premise on our behalf. Whenever we want, he will give. Which means that we don't have to stock inventory. Inventory is just a, it's a product. A raw material is called as inventory. A working process or, or a semi-finished go goods is called as an inventory. The final product before selling is also called as an inventory. When you produce something and we, when you, and then you sell it to a customer, the moment you got the cash for the product, then only the sales is closed. Before that, it is considered inventory. Inventory is something your money is tied up to the particular product. It is not encashed. That is called as inventory. So when when you outsource your product or when you uh, find a way. Somebody take care of your product, which means that it will lower the inventories. The productivity will improve because there is no more uh, uh, frill work we are doing. We are doing only the core competency. We are not at all concentrating on other things. And we will be, we'll be uh, great agile. I mean, agility is something your uh, responsiveness. You are responding to the particular situation. That is called as agility. Using supply chain, you exactly know what kind of business you are doing, what kind of things you are expected from the customer. It makes you to work really harder and smarter and faster, and shorter lead times. It will uh, uh, cut short the lead times. Lead time is the uh, one which 
uh, from starting point to end point, how much time it takes, the conversion rate of the product, that is called as lead time. It will fetch you a lot of profit and more customer loyalty will be there because the customers know that you, you promise something and you deliver it on time. Because you have an efficient system, you have an agile system. If somebody is coming to the, the classic example is, if, if somebody, uh, if, if you are having a particular kind of business and some person coming to your office and stay, saying that, I need this kind of material tomorrow morning. It is an impossible task. Just believe me, it is an impossible task. But if you can say him that, yes, I can do that, but I'll charge you uh, two times or three times more the money. He will definitely give you because he wants the product anyway. But nobody will do it in the night time. But if you can do that, you will get a lot of money. But to do that, you must have a flexible system which can accommodate any order. You must have a flexible em employees to employ at any time. You, mu you must have a flexible system in place so that you can do a lot of things. Okay. The next slide. Yes, uh, this, okay, next, next. Thank you. Okay, the supply chain, supply chain is basically a kind of integrating all the components. The before slide and this slide is almost same. I'm gonna explain that, okay. So the way business operated uh, changed vitally from 90s to uh, 2000, then 2010 and 2020. Now we are mostly uh, following just-in-time concept. That is, we don't want to uh, stock the inventory. We are working very lean. That is, our organization is very lean. Whatever is necessary, we are going to produce only that. Because it, it all happened uh, after the World War II. After World War II, <clears throat> there is a, a shortage in raw materials. Companies are forced to think differently to minimize the waste. The companies like uh, the US companies are uh, big in money. They did a lot of things. Like they, they can uh, produce a lot of things, they can waste a lot of things. But that is not case with uh, other nations like Japanese. Or Japan, they are already affected heavily by the Second World War. They can't invest much money in the infrastructure or in the extravagant expenses. So they invested their time and effort on quality. So to make a car, you need 10,300 materials means they will produce only 10,300 materials. They don't waste even a single bolt or nut because they don't want to waste anything. In that way, they save a lot of money. So whenever the order is coming, Whenever the order is coming, that is the idea behind Dell computers. See, it's a fantastic idea. I'm telling you that. Okay. Uh, the traditionally, if at all you want to uh, buy a laptop or a system, you go to a particular outlet. Okay. And you go to a particular outlet, you order for that particular product. He may have the product or may not. If he may not mean he will order the same thing from a distribution center and it will be delivered to you uh, probably uh, half a day time or one day time. So this is how it works. So some guy is manufacturing a laptop and it, it is sell, uh, sell to a, a seller and he is selling to you. So at least two or three middlemen is there in that particular process. Each one will cost at least 5% margin on that particular product, which means that the 40,000 laptop you try to buy becomes 55,000 or 60,000 after the taxes. It is, it is a unnecessary cost borne by the customer. Dell thought, uh, this area they can uh, channelize, this area they can change. What they did is, uh, they kind of introduced a new concept called build to order, which means that uh, Dell platform is there, whatever kind of customization you want, you can do any kind of customization regarding a laptop. You want a 15 inch screen with a different uh, software, you can do. You try to uh, build a computer on your own in a system itself. Con you can configure that. And, and once the configuration is done, the Dell computers have tie up with lots of suppliers. So they send the intent to the particular suppliers to send the particular component to their nearest manufacturing plant. Suppose the customer is, uh, uh, what, what is it? He's customizing from Bangalore. So there is a production plant in Bangalore. So all the parts will be sent to the particular production plant. And then, then the only thing they have to do is assemble the particular product and give it to the customers. You know what uh, profit is uh, they are uh, gaining? It's like 20 to 30 percent cost is reduced. It is directly given to the customer. It's kind of disrupted the whole market. So the same kind of computer, when others are selling for 60 and 70, Dell can do that for 40 and 50 with 10 percent margins also. So it disrupted the market because they streamlined the uh, supply chain. They are pretty much lean. They are existing in the virtual world. They are not at all stocking their products. Everything is maintained by somebody else. The only thing they are doing is they need a small plant 
where they can assemble their product and sell it to the customers. You don't have to erect a complete plan and maintain that and you employ a lot of persons. No, you're not. But they own the process because they definitely know what kind of uh, expectation may arise from the customers and what are the possible models may come. They predicted that. They didn't uh, do uh, nothing and uh, selling the product. Yes, they, they uh, tried to analyze each and every concept and each and every possibilities of models and they have a catalog kind of thing. You can customize it. So that's the same thing uh, done by uh, Apple computers in uh, their production plan. So the lead time is reduced from 90 days to 90 hours for making the iPod. That's what I think it's uh, done by uh, just-in-time concept. Not only that these two companies, there are a number of companies like uh, McDonald's is there and uh, uh, a lot of companies are there. Toyota production system, Nissan, a lot of companies use all those uh, just-in-time concept to reduce these things. Okay, next slide. We are going to go a little fast because uh, you understood the concept, right? Okay. So uh, what are all the drivers of supply chain? Supply chain is, a, as we said, it's a overall concept. A overall concept got some four or five pillars. It can be applied in the area of production, inventory, location, transportation, and information. Can you go to the next slide? OK. In production, we have to understand what we have to produce and how we have to produce and when we have to produce. These three are a critical question because what we have to produce, when we know what customers want, then we have to produce that. Not that we have some capacity so that we are producing. That's not at all a case. Even our uh, machines are idle. It doesn't matter. As long as we are producing something which is uh, meeting the requirement of the customers, it will sell. It will sell, else it won't sell at all. Again, it will be a pressure for us. We have a product, but it is not at all selling, which means that it's not required by the company. I mean, customers. Or it is not meeting the expectation of the customers. We have to give a product. It's not only a product, it's a value. So you are buying some, uh, let's take for an instance, you're going to a hotel and buying a dosa. And they charge you 25 rupees and it's a fantastic. And you thought in your mind that I had the same kind of dosa in another hotel for 100 rupees. I waste a lot of money. And you'll, loyal, you'll be loyal to that particular hotel forever. Because they gave you a product with a value. So the cost is reduced and the quality is more. What else you want? Nothing. Like that, we have to uh, think in our mind what kind of product we are making and how we are making. How we are making in the sense of, uh, are we going to uh, produce that? Uh, is it comes under our core competency? Or are we going to uh, outsource to somebody else who can do the better job in that? And when we have to produce it, we have to understand at what kind of, uh, or what kind, or what time the customers want the particular product. There are a lot of seasonality in the products also. So you can't make a same thing again and again. So Diwali, you can make crackers. Like uh, September or August, you can make crackers. But not that that much quantity in May. It is not. It is kind of useless, right? OK, and on inventory, we have to calculate whether we are going to maintain our own or uh, we are going to use any vendor managed inventory system. And the location, the same example I gave before. So we have to meet the customer. We must be in a position to deliver the product. But any point of time, some guy uh, probably uh, from a school or college, go to a particular outlet, Satya outlet, let's take. He said that I want 100 AC units tomorrow morning. Suddenly, I, we got a donation and we are going to install a lot of ACs for our students. I want 100 ACs. If your company is in a position to uh, to give those 100 units as soon as possible, probably you must, you might have a warehouse or a distribution center nearby. If you can do that, you can tap that business. If you say that we don't have even that much stock, he is persisting that he wants 100 units from the same company. You say that, no, sir, I don't have uh, that much unit. I have only 40. You wait for 10 days, I'll give you another 60. He won't accept that. So lo location is primary. If your products are located near to the customer, you can sell more. But at the same time, you must have the stocks also more. OK, transportation. We have to think in a different way of uh, delivering a product to the customers. It's not always that uh, we are uh, sending the uh, big trucks to the customers and delivering it. Suppose uh, you might, guys uh, might have come to the Chennai. There is a place called Broadway. In Chennai, it's very narrow in uh, uh, size. There is exactly a place called Saukarpet. Only five or 10 members can walk inside that. It's very narrow. But there are a lot of business are going on, kind of like 1,000 uh, pros or 2,000 pros per, uh, per year. That's for sure. 
so you need to uh, give a material for that particular kind of customers also you can actually use any kind of uh, transportation in china and all they are using small trucks they are using uh, mopeds they are even uh, walking and giving the product to the customer end of the day the product has to reach the hand of the customer it doesn't matter which mode of transportation you are using even amazon uh, which is a, a famous player in the e-commerce uh, area they're trying to use drones imagine they are trying to use drones to deliver the product because in some area which is uh, very cumbersome which it's very tough to maneuver drone is kind of easy you can maneuver easily in the airways and you can deliver the product okay next slide and everything is connected with the information without information there is nothing okay uh, so the same thing we are going to see uh, say again uh, can skip the slide next so the concept here is the economics of scale okay okay uh, so the time is 10:52 i don't want to waste much much of your time so we are going to come to the end of the session we are going to see what are all the challenges faced by business in 2020 or what, what is the kind of uh, challenges faced by the contemporary business when i say contemporary it's right now happening Uh, the way the business operated <clears throat> is changed every now and then and covid uh, massively attacked all the industries so these five are the important problems faced by the industries right now i want to emphasize on these things because it's pretty much important you know the air and sea freight limitation is there so government completely banned air transportation you know that when i say global transportation which means that you can always get a product from any place like china if it is cheap you can always buy that indonesia it is cheap you can always buy that but by uh, air or sea but now it is limited which means that everything is stopped i so far uh, completely depend upon china and indonesia to run my business uh, to run the business or or uh, uh, getting the raw materials now i have i am forced to buy those things in india even, even in india also so the land transportation is stopped except medication or except uh, normal things rest of things are stopped there are a lot of compliance issues are there there are a lot of checkings are there because uh, people are prone to disease and uh, if at all you are moving to a particular state which is isolated or which is uh, not having any covid cases and people will check you and for checking and taking test it will take a uh, two days or three days which means that your cargo is stuck in the road for two days or three days we we have to understand nowadays all the business are uh, almost uh, working in just in time concept which means that everybody doesn't have uh, any buffer stock at all they are working with a, a skeleton crew with a limited resources so a particular resource or uh, raw material is stopped which means that their production plant itself stopped and the borders of the nations are closed and you can't send it's not only that uh, we are uh, uh, relying on uh, import we do send lot of things abroad also like uh, kadapa is known for uh, sending uh, uh, chilies and we send lot of uh, agricultural products and uh, we sell a uh, lot of uh, meat and other stuff to the foreign nations and uh, these things are uh, uh, put into check because all the borders are closed and workforce and labor shortage so we so far enjoyed uh, people uh, from other states uh, coming and working here we always say that we the, we can get our uh, some bihari some assamese guys and girls for uh, pretty much uh, cheap money so all the salons are recruiting the northeast uh, uh, state people because uh, they are they are handy and uh, they have a very good work ethics the plus thing is uh, they charge you very less money now due to covid most of the employees are went to their hometown so there there is an acute shortage in labor so even now we are getting business also we can't do it because we don't have that much uh, capacity to do either in raw material or in labor so that's a problem faced by all the employees and another thing is supply chain resilience it's, it's a uh, believe it or not it's a single most thing it's come out of uh, covid 19 okay supply chain resilience resilience is a word means that uh, our response to a particular situation how to respond to a particular situation when the covid comes everything is stopped people are uh, running to the shops to buy things whatever things is available there is a no difference between brand and non brand they kind of grabbed all those things If you want to go to any shop, usually people will buy Paris Sugar or any other brand of sugar. But in this stage, 
even any brand any local brands are selling more in this uh, covid time so the the thing happened because we don't have a plan we don't have a strategy to react in this particular kind of pandemic or unprecedented times we need to have a, a kind of supply chain resilience if anything comes like this also we can respond okay these are the five important challenges faced by companies and we have a probable solution also can we go to the next slide balan can you go to the next slide? yes thank you so before 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 the previous slide next one go little this one next one okay the solution is uh, you know you all know that uh, as i said airlines are kind of closed now uh, uh, one of my friend is working in sri lankan airlines he used to say that uh, they are dealing at least 20 to 25 uh, uh, flights per week now they are operating only three flights because passenger flights are completely stopped they are operating only cargo and in some places they are uh, sending the uh, passengers but we have to change all those passenger carrier as a cargo carrier in that way we can, can save a lot of money and we need we need to have kind of collaborative effort by suppliers because the business is happening is very less so the supplier is having huge kind of uh, raw material so they can collaborate with other suppliers and uh, they work together in that way they can mitigate their uh, problems a little so we have to work as a team we have to work whatever uh, profit is coming we have to share among among self the another thing is enforcement of mitigation and emergency strategies as i said uh, supply chain resilience we don't have any plans for uh, this kind of pandemic and we must have a system and process we must have some strategies If anything happens we must employ a lot of uh, healthcare related things we must have a lot of uh, work from home concept we must have lot of uh, virtual spaces so that these things can be uh, taken very easily all those companies who are uh, working in the virtual space are not at all affected people like byju sir affected no they are not at all affected the only area which is affected are the place where physical activities is happening because of social distancing the companies who are dealt with uh, uh, telephones and uh, internet and google meet and zoom they are safe in fact they are flourishing because their business is that kind of thing okay the very reason we couldn't predict this uh, pandemic or any uh, supply chain resilience is because we don't have any visibility in our supply chain visibility in the sense whatever i am doing my collaborator or the stakeholder is not able to do it because i'm not at all sharing what i'm doing or he can't uh, understand what i'm doing the only thing is all the stakeholders in the total process must sit together and discuss among themselves what is their goal for 6 months to achieve that particular goal in 6 months what are the things they must do as a team from each company so we have to sit with all the uh, stakeholders for example if suppose uh, hyundai want to uh, produce a 10 lakhs car for this uh, year 2021 they have some 700 suppliers everybody has to sit together for a meeting either virtually or presently and they have to discuss to achieve that uh, 10 lakh cars what kind of job every team must do and they must have checks and barrels also they must have some deadlines they must have some uh, uh, kind of uh, checklist to see their progress when it, when they can do that there is a visibility among all the stakeholders when there is a visibility automatically the risk of uh, uh, any emergency situation will be mitigated okay to do that we have to embrace the technology it's no longer the physical thing we have to embrace the technology like artificial intelligence see uh, we can't predict everything uh, uh, in a good sense all the time we are uh, kind of controlled by emotions but ai is not so it gives it gives you the logical solutions so we have to employ ai more and we have to employ agv or automated guided vehicles so uh, there are a lot of uh, instances companies like uh, fedex and all they are using agv so inside the warehouse there is a kind of uh, flat uh, wheel is there it is called as agv it will run on its own because the information is fed into the particular system it go from place one to place b and give the product and back again to the same thing okay that is ca- called as agv and another important area is iot which is called as internet of things we are already using that but, but we never know we often see that traffic si- signals are changing on its own because the information is given by another system so one instrument is interacting with another instrument 
in a software that is called as iot so the future is iot every machine will will interact with another machine and it will take decision on its own but the decision is predetermined by us it's not it takes some random decision it is predetermined by us and we have to employ a lot of uh, warehouse management system and we have to use uh, gps or global positioning system for tracking and we have to use blockchain because in that way we can, can save our information we have that ownership of that process and another thing is the nfc near field communication so we are already using a lot of barcodes and uh, rfids but nfc is the next future so it's it's kind of uh, iot so so all the systems uh, like if at all you are going to any petrol shop to put a petrol you use the card most of the times even the card is enabled in NF nfc so that nfc is interacting with another machine also so we have to digitize all our records so that anything happens bad we have to track again we have to reverse engineer that and change the process and come back to us again so blockchain will help ensure that data is secured so the future is uh, what is a kind of interesting only so we will have a lot of uh, interaction with the internet we, we will have a lot of interaction with the uh, lot of technologies that will improve the business as a whole and it will improve our country definitely okay okay thanks for the opportunity i'm, I'm two minutes late i'm ready for any questions the next slide thanks for this opportunity it's it's, it's a small presentation um, i hope i gave something later to supply chain as a whole okay Thank any questions okay anything is given students if you have any questions you can put it in chat box yes either you can use the chat box or you can ask directly not an issue students students okay so what are the certifications courses they can do while they are doing a uh, second year or first year or even third years to get in the job in logistics and supply chain management okay there are uh, i would suggest to go for uh, some reputed institute like uh, cia institute of logistics cii confederation of indian industries they are having a kind of uh, center of excellence which is called as uh, institute of logistics they can try their uh, luck there or they can go to liba liba is uh, having a program in evenings they are providing this a six months course they are having a, a course in logistics they are having a course in supply chain they, ha they have a course in data analytics everything is related kind of they can do that and they can try indian institute of material management which is in chennai also okay Thanks, sir. Thank you for joining with us, and uh, it is nice to hear from you. Oh, to Anita. Thank you, Anita. Thank you so much. Thank, sir. Thankful, thankfulness is the beginning of gratitude. Gratitude is the completion of thankfulness. Thankfulness may consist merely of words. Gratitude is shown in acts. It's time to say thank you. I request Ashwini from First MS. To deliver the oath of thanks. Oath of thanks. It's time to say goodbye to you all. I thank our chief guest, Professor Siranjeevi, for his dedication and accepting our invitation. Thank you, sir. We looking forward to learn from you more. Don Bosco College always work towards empowerment of youth. I take this opportunity to thank our rector. principal dean and other friends and bros who are supporting us in all the activities dear faculty members of department of management studies thank you for arranging such events and giving us opportunities to explore i thank my friends who supported for the success of this session thank you all Yeah. Do you want me to close or you'll close? Okay. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for the time. Thank you, sir. Thank I you so much.
ஜெக்ரட்டரி who are helping me to conduct such events thank you guys and uh, thank you students who participated in today's event we look forward for others to volunteer and extend your support to us thank you anita out to thank you all we will meet in the another interesting topic thank you all thanks all everybody